Hi, it's me again, and I got a fairly large box from Atlas with some stuff in it for N Scale Friday. Let's go to the workbench. All right, so in case you didn't realize it, there were two locomotives that I was holding up there a second ago for this intro. I'm going to set those aside for a moment, and we're going to look at the rolling stock. They all come with these sort of clamshell type cases. I think that's what you call these. That's what I call them. And so uh, let's let's take a closer look. Here's what we have in order. This one is the ATSF BX177 60 foot boxcar. And we'll take a closer look at these in a second. I'm just going to show you what they are before we before we get into the details here. This one is a Burlington Northern, obviously. Precision design 50 foot ribside boxcar. Like I said, it's in BN colors. This one, that's an 11,000 gallon tank car decorated for Dow chemicals. And then, of course, we have the last one, which is the GSI 60 foot flat car decorated as a trailer train flat car. So let's take a closer look at these things one at a time. Okay, so looking at the 60 foot boxcar first, the paint on it is very crisp. The printing on it is very crisp as well. The detailing on it is nicely rendered. The uh, grabs at the ends are molded, but they look pretty good. And the door detail is also very nicely done. Let's take a look at the ends. Looking at the end here, you can see that it has separately applied ladders, separately applied brake brake wheel the printing is very nice the brake wheel also has a chain there's a cut lever and there's also an air hose so the detail on this is even better than some HO scale offerings very nice now we're looking at the bottom I can point out that the knuckle coupler is in fact body mounted that's a nice feature there you have metal wheels and full brake rigging very nice, Atlas. This is on par with some of the higher-end N-Scale offerings I've seen on the channel recently. Something else I want to point out real quick. The writing inside the COTS block and all these little details on the side here, you can read that with a lot of magnification. So this is, this is really nicely done. All right, let's take a look at this 50-foot ribside boxcar. Once again, as you can see, Straight off the top there, the paint is really nice. The printing also really nice. I'm going to pick this thing up and take a look at the writing very close up, like I did for the red one a second ago. You can read all of the writing, even this super tiny stuff with magnification. It's all legible. The door detail is pretty nice. It's all molded, but it's pretty nice there. Door tracks are also molded, but they look almost like separate, separately applied parts. Looking at the end here, you can see it has a separately applied brake wheel. It doesn't have the air hose and cut levers, but the ladders on the ends also are separately applied. Looking really nice. You can see it has a knuckle coupler. Let's take a look at the bottom. As I was saying, there's a knuckle coupler with trip pins. Uh, nice brake rigging. You know, keep in mind it's N scale, so this is pretty highly detailed for N scale. Nice car. All right, moving on to the 11,000 gallon tank car decorated for Dow. And once again, as you can see, the paint's really nice on this one too. Very crisp printing on the side there. You can read everything. I'm going to pick it up here and take a closer look with my magnifying visor on the writing on the hazardous material placard is legible all the writing down below is legible as well most of this tiny writing on the end here is legible as well very nice fairly finely rendered grab irons and hatch detail as you can see that is pretty good legible printing on the end Nice hazmat placard. The brake wheel is a separately applied piece. This is a truck mounted knuckle coupler 
and, and there's some fairly decent brake rigging going on here. And you know, they have to have some brake rigging because you can see that from the side when it's rolling down the track. As you can see, it, it has a diamond plate walkway. So, molded, of course. Looks pretty good, though. Okay, and finally, for the rolling stock, we're going to take a look at this GSI 60-foot flat car. So, when I'm doing this, I'm looking at it with my magnification off-camera here. All that tiny writing is legible with magnification. All of it. Except the little tiny, tiny, tiny parts on the end here on what looks like a cots block looking at the deck you can see the nail pattern and i don't know if you can tell it's kind of hard to see but the stake pockets on the side are hollow so you could use those if you wanted to tie down a load so that's pretty good deck detail i just wanted to mention that you have to be super careful because these parts are very delicate one of the stirrups on the side uh, further away from the camera, this side back here, one of the stirrups fell off when I was taking it out of the box. So if you get this flat car, be extra careful unpackaging it. You can see it has a uh, body mounted knuckle coupler and an air hose. So it does have the, the air hose, which was missing on the last two pieces of rolling stock we were looking at. So like I said, body mounted knuckle coupler. This has metal wheels very nice there's not a whole lot of brake rigging down here now but they did have to put some because it's visible when the car is rolling down the track it's a die cast metal body so there is some weight to it that's also why the brake rigging is only sort of half on there and not full and what i mean by that is you can see that's not a full tank there it's just half of a tank pushed up on the bottom basically and this is where that stirrup fell off on the other side and you know what as I was just doing this look what else just fell off the brake wheel all right and these are the two locomotives I have to show you the one in front here is a Southern Pacific SD 35 and the one behind there is a GP 35 since this is the one I'm most excited about I'm gonna do that last as you can see from looking at this model, it's fairly plain, uh, but that this is what this paint scheme looked like. And I'm pretty sure that this is a, a fairly old tooling that Atlas has been using for a long time. This is a recent release though, because I they haven't done this same road number before. And you can see there's little highlighting around the fuel tank area. Looks pretty nice. So as you can see, there's a lot of molded detail on this thing. Paint's pretty pretty good. The logo on the front looks pretty good too. But you can see the number boards. Nicely done. And I'm sure they light up. I'm going to show you the lights on this in a minute. Something else worth mentioning while we're looking at it is that the locomotive does have Accumate knuckle couplers. It has a slow speed motor, golden white LEDs that are directional lighting, by the way. Uh, headlight and rear headlight go on depending on what direction you have it going. Okay, so I have my JMRI running on this little test track here. And we're going to see how this thing runs. I'm trying to go as slow as I can first. and We'll see if it's... Turn the light on. There it goes. Pretty slow, pretty quiet. The light looks pretty nice too. Now keep in mind this is straight out of the box. I have not broken this in at all. You can see the light now. Nice. There's not really a lot more to look at with this one because it doesn't have any sound. It runs though. This is good. Now let's look at that SP locomotive. That's the one I really want to see. Very thin paint. Good details. Good grill details. The fans look really good, especially for N scale. 
What I like about it is it looks cool, and this will look good running with my SD24. All right, so I got the model set up now, and what I'm gonna do is move the microphone over the model so you can actually hear it, and let's turn this thing on. All right, so I figure we should probably take a look at the lights here. You can see the number boards and the headlights come on at the same time. This is a nice model. I can't wait to run this. It sounds as good, maybe even better than the one that I did the sound install on my own, the SD24. All right, so that does it for this episode of N-Scale Friday. Thanks very much, Atlas, for sending these products to show off. And just for everybody else's information, these products are now available at your local retailers. I have a list here of all the MSRP information for that. The GP35 that I showed you lists for $154.95. The SD35 that I showed you, that's the Southern Pacific one, retails for $234.95. The 11,000 gallon tank car is $32.95. The Santa Fe boxcar, which was my other favorite model from this batch of models. That was the uh, red one with all the ex excellent extra detail. $31.95. So that's right on par with your top level manufacturers at the moment uh, for $31.95. Really excellent release by Atlas. The 60 foot flat car, which was the yellow flat car, $29.95. And remember, be extra careful with that one because those detail parts, uh, the stirrups and that brake wheel are pretty fragile. And then the 50-foot boxcar, that was the Burlington Northern one, lists out at $25.95. So thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next N-Scale Friday.